Who's the boss? Is it you or your curriculum? Hi, I am Rachel from 7 and All. I am a second generation homeschooler. And in today's video, I am going to be talking about how to make sure that you are getting the most out of your curriculum without letting it boss you around. I am going to be talking about how to make your curriculum work for you. I am a very strong believer that you do not need to have the best curriculum and the best resources out there. You just need to be able to use what you do have and use it effectively. So today I'm going to share a couple of quick tips on how to use your resources and your curriculum more effectively. My number one tip is read the front matter. Read all of those pages that come at the beginning of your teacher's manuals. And this really comes down to the idea that a handyman should know his tools. Whatever your field, whatever your career is, you need to know the tools that you're working with in order to do a good job with those tools. So all too often we're kind of impatient, we just wanna get started or we feel like we don't have the time. So we skip reading those 20 pages of front matter in the beginning of the teacher's guides. But then when we're using the curriculum, we're feeling a little lost, we're feeling a little frustrated, or feel like we don't know what's going on, and the only person we can really blame for that is ourselves. You need to know your tools. Decide that this is part of your job to know the tools that you're working with. So when you get that curriculum, before you get started, before you ever start trying to use it with your kids, sit down, read it. Read about um, what all the parts of it are for. In that front matter, in any curriculum worth its salt, you should expect to find the why and the how to really help you understand why does this curriculum do things the way that they do? How are we going to implement this on a daily basis? And you should also typically find a lot of tips for real life implementation and usually also ideas for adjustments. Curriculum writers know that every person is not going to use the curriculum the exact same way. And they do some of that work for you by giving you ideas on how to adjust that can spark your own ideas and take some of the work off of your shoulders. So know your tools before you just jump in and try to start using them. Number two, and this ties into knowing your curriculum. When you know your curriculum well, you should know which parts of the curriculum can be safely skipped. When you understand your curriculum, you'll know which parts are much more essential and which parts are not so essential for your situation. I am frequently getting asked, can you use math with confidence without the teacher's guide? Can I just buy the student workbook? And if you know the math with confidence curriculum, you will know that the answer is simply no, you cannot. It is not a workbook only curriculum. It's not designed to be used that way and it's not going to be very effective if used that way. So you cannot skip the teacher's guide in a curriculum like math with confidence. But there are curriculums that you can skip some of the elements depending on your situation and depending on your needs. With math you see, for example, um, maybe once in a year we might break out the teaching DVDs. We don't actually use the teaching videos. We use the curriculum, we use the worksheets, we love the curriculum, we use the manipulatives, but we don't actually use the videos because I've used Math UC long enough that I know how to teach math the Math UC way. I don't need the videos. <laughs> um, and videos just don't tend to work very well in our rhythm of school. So I know I can safely do the math, get a lot out of it, but I don't need that element of it. So know your curriculum well enough to know which parts you can skip and which parts you really can't. Now, number three, curriculums often come with some kind of suggested pace, but you need to know that you can move faster or you can take extra time as needed. When you are teaching your child, you're not teaching a curriculum. Your goal in teaching is not to finish the level. It's not to finish the curriculum. Your goal is for your child to learn something. So sometimes learning something takes a lot less time than you expect it will. Sometimes it takes a lot more time than you expect it will. So when you're using your curriculum, go into it with that mindset that I can take less time and I can take more time than the suggested schedule of the curriculum. I can spend fewer days or I could spend more days on it. There might be times when you just wanna pause in your math for a week or two and work on building 
fact, fluency and speed. There might be times when you want to stop moving ahead with phonics lessons and just reread some old readers to build that fluency and to build that confidence. It's not always about moving on to the next lesson. It's really about what is your child learning? How are their skills growing? And what you need to do to make sure that those goals are being met and that that progress is happening. Number four, while you can always adapt a curriculum to your family and your needs, I also wanna say, don't overthink. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink adapting the curriculum because I have seen moms fall down into this endless pit of overthinking it and trying to make it the most perfectly adapted, perfectly aligned curriculum for whatever their homeschool vision is. And motherhood and homeschool is already a pretty heavy mental load. And at some point, you just need to kind of let your curriculum take that mental load for you and just don't overthink it. So this can go in two directions. On the one hand, say you have a literature-based curriculum and it's got all these books and read aloud scheduled for you okay you know if, if you are very confident you want to swap out a couple things that's fine but if you take things too far you might end up overthinking it and feeling like no i i need to find the most perfectly themed the most perfectly interesting the most perfect read aloud for while we're studying this period in history and it needs to line up with this and it needs to line up with our geography and everything um, so I'm going to swap out this and I'm going to move this to a different part of the year and all of this. I've seen moms go down this trail and for me, I'm just like, you know, it's okay if things don't line up. It's okay if not everything is themed and adapted properly. And it's even okay if you read a less than amazing book once in a while to your kids. Um, when I'm given a book list, I love literature-based learning. I love literature-based curriculums. When I'm given a book list, yeah, I might make a couple swaps to fit my goals and my family's needs, but in reality, I'm not going to overthink and stress about whether every book is perfectly scheduled and every book is perfectly the title I want. No, like, I don't have the mental energy for that. I think a lot of people don't need to be putting that much energy into it because your kids are going to learn. <laughs> it doesn't all have to be lined up. It's okay if we read a read aloud that features the Vikings here and then, like, we study the Vikings next year. That's okay. <laughs> it's totally fine. So don't overthink it in that direction to where you're constantly adapting it to fit your like perfect vision because I think that's unsustainable um, in the long term of homeschool. I think it really is. And also, on the other hand, if your curriculum is telling you to do something and you're just like, I don't want to do it <laughs> for whatever reason, huh, this science experiment, this recipe, this whatever activity, you just look at that and you're like, I don't want to. Also, don't overthink that. <laughs> you don't have to go back and forth on the benefits versus the pros, the cons, how much your kids will learn, anything. You might just see a idea and you're like, that feels really messy and I have a couple of toddlers and it's just gonna be stressful and yeah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Move on with your life, don't overthink it. And my final tip for making your curriculum work for you is make a plan and stick to the plan. Make your schedule, make your routine, make your curriculum choices, whatever your plans are. Do take the time to make those plans and then roll with them. <laughs> Just let them roll. And again, kind of goes back to the last one. Don't be overthinking everything. Roll with it, allow yourself to get comfortable, allow you and your kids to build strong habits and rhythms. Because in the end, habits, rhythms, and routines will do a lot of the work for you. Of course, when there's a good reason, deviate from the normal routine rhythm or deviate from the plan. If your family suddenly gets an opportunity to go on a really cool trip on a week that you planned school, obviously just cancel school and go on the fun trip. <laughs> I would do that. But when you have a firm rhythm, you have a plan, you have a habit of sticking to your plan and just rolling, rolling with the necessities of homeschooling life, you won't find yourself on a regular basis accidentally somehow not doing school because it just didn't happen that day. That's not gonna happen because doing school and having this routine and following your plan is going to be such a naturally ingrained part of your rhythm and of your days that you don't really have to stress about it or think about it. You just wake up and you do it, just like you wake up and go to work. 
habits and rhythms will help you to use these resources that you've invested in effectively versus sporadically. As you create these plans, think about who you are and who your kids are. As you create these rhythms, as you build these habits, really uh, make room for the personhood of yourself and of your kids. So know yourself, know what actually helps you. For me, writing down ahead of time some of the key things, I don't write down everything, but some of the key, maybe more fun things I wanna do in a week helps me make sure I actually remember to do those things. If I don't write them down, they will probably slip my mind because I am much more aligned to, I'm very focused on my work, getting my work done, getting the more business-like parts of our day, I definitely will get done but I take the time to write down any ideas I have for something a little bit more playful, more fun, and more outside the box, because those are the things that tend to slip my mind. So I know myself, I do what I need, I write them down on a list, I make note of some of my ideas so I can make sure that they actually happen. All right, these have been my five tips for making your curriculum work for you. I hope that these are helpful as you think about going into this next school year and using the tools that you have planned and purchased effectively. I'll be seeing you next time for more nerdy homeschool videos right here on 7 and Off. Bye!